Good morning. I'm here today to announce that we have gathered enough signatures to recall Andy Dillon and place it on the August primary. We're recalling Dillon for his uh, vote to raise taxes by $1.4 billion annually and also because he increased our uh, income tax by 12 percent, our business tax by 22 percent, and our um, the general fund budget by 8% and the legislative budget by 7%. We're, uh, the number of signatures that we've gathered are over 16,000. We are vetting them right now and we have uh, 11,380 signatures that we already know to be valid signatures. And we're hoping that uh, uh, by this afternoon we'll have more to turn in and we will be turning them into the Secretary of State in Lansing the Bureau of Elections. Um, I, I have to tell you that I'm really uh, appreciative of all the hard work that the people have put in in this community to gather signatures, not only standing in front of stores, but walking the streets door to door to collect, to collect, excuse me, to collect signatures for uh, the recall of Andy Dillon. Um, a lot of people were hurt very much by the uh, increase in taxes, uh, people are losing their homes, losing their jobs, and now losing their uh, what income they do have. And it's been very hard on a lot of people. And so they felt that they needed to remove Dylan from office. And when you uh, take out the head of the snake, you also get rid of the snake as a whole. So maybe they'll learn something in Lansing. Maybe they'll know that the people they represent are the people in their district and not the, the uh, lobbyists or the special interests up in Lansing. And I'm, uh, again, elated and thankful for everybody's help with regard to this recall. All right. Well, thank you, Rose. And it was a pleasure to help uh, you and the Wayne County Taxpayers Association uh, organize the recall effort and provide what assistance the, uh, that we could do through Michigan recalls. Uh, you know, the people, uh, Andy Dillon had a choice. Uh, so did the legislature. They could have lived within their means. They could have reduced spending. Uh, they had a lot of options. But Andy Dillon and the state legislature chose the worst option. They chose to increase taxes on the citizens of Michigan at a time when they're economically struggling. So now the citizens of the district will have a choice. Thanks to Rose Bogart and the Wayne County Taxpayers Association, they will have a choice as to whether or not Andy Dillon made the right choice by increasing their taxes. I, excuse me, let sure. me add something, something that I should have added at the very beginning and is that I couldn't have done it without the help of the Michigan Taxpayers Alliance. Um, the, the amount of grief that we incurred and the amount of, of uh, disruption on the part of uh, Dylan's thugs uh, was overwhelming. And Leon Drolette and the Michigan Taxpayers Alliance came in and saved the day. Thank you very much, Leon. Well, thank you, Rose. And you know what? Uh, one thing that I found out uh, when I spent some time talking to the residents of uh, Dearborn Heights and Redford and Livonia is that citizens of the district get it. They know that increasing taxes on people at a time when their incomes are dropping, thanks to Michigan's economy, is a bad idea. The other thing I found out is that the citizens of, the, of, of this community are literate and they can actually read the first line of the recall petition, which states very clearly that we, the underside qualified voters, petitioned for the calling of an election to recall Andy Dillon. This is in the first sentence. Nothing tricky about it. And so for uh, Andy Dillon and, uh, and, and his friend uh, Mark Brewer and the legislators suggest that the citizens of Dearborn Heights and Redford are illiterate and that they're too stupid to read, I think is an insult to the citizens of the district. So um, I would suggest that Andy Dillon um, uh, talk about why he thought a big fat tax increase would help the citizens and then let the citizens vote on whether or not they agree with him on that instead of trying to throw allegations out there that people are stupid, people can't read, people are illiterate. You know, that's an insult to the citizens. The citizens can read and also citizens get basic economics. You don't encourage jobs in Michigan by raising business taxes 22 percent. That just doesn't work. So. Um, Again, uh, we'll be submitting uh, these signatures to the Secretary of State this afternoon. Uh, Rose, thank you for uh, you know, announcing that over 16,000 people signed the petitions. 
11,380 so far valid. We're still going through, the, through to check as many as we can before we submit this afternoon. That's way, way, way more than are required uh, the, of the 8,724 that are required. And guess what? People signed up because they agreed that the tax increase was wrong and that Eddie Dillon should be held accountable, not because they couldn't read. Anything else, Rose? Thank you to all the people who showed up here today. Thank you to the recall uh, and the assistants and uh, <laughs> the Wayne County Taxpayers Association. Great job. And uh, let's move on to the next phase. The next phase is uh, he'll, Andy Dillon can explain his side, why he thinks a tax increase is a great idea. And Rose and her group can explain why they think it was a terrible idea. And we'll be doing that in court on uh, May 5th because there are more trumped up charges against us. So uh, I'm not concerned about going because I know what happened. And I know we are right. And I know Dylan's got to go. You know, Rose, what's confusing is how Dylan is going around telling citizens that he's vastly popular, telling everyone in Lansing how popular he is, yet he's taking every action to try and block and stop the election. He's using, he's trying to stop the election by any means necessary. Uh, right. Court, judge shopping, suits, allegations, anything, blockers, uh, hiring convicted felons. Uh, you know, he has stopped at nothing to try and stop this petition drive and to stop the election. Uh, and yet he walks around saying what a, how popular he is for raising taxes in his district. It's a bit confusing. Thank you. Thank you. Questions? You, uh, gentleman with the, uh, <laughs> yes, with the uh, notepad, yes. Yeah, the incentive for the donors that live out of the state is the fact that they, they pay the Michigan business tax. For example, uh, one of the donors uh, they mentioned was Leslie Rose. They listed him. He was born and raised in Michigan. He owns a business here in Michigan. And he just got his taxes increased 300% on his apartment complex by the Michigan business tax. Another person they, they single out is Lee Rodney. Lee Rodney lives in Nevada. Born and raised in Michigan. Family lives in Michigan. Still spends a great deal of time in Michigan. Owns a business in Southfield and had his business taxes raised almost, uh, I forget what the total was, but over 200%. So all this you know, out of state money that they're talking about is people paying Michigan business taxes and have a, a big investment in Michigan. I'd like to add something to that, and that is maybe you should be asking Dylan where he's getting his money from because his money is being, uh, his flyers that I saw were funded by the National Democratic Fund. Um, the uh, uh, police organizations, the state police organizations, so they're out of district. The the uh, uh, UAW, I think, was one of them, and and you know these are people who do not live in the district. So it it I was it, oh, excuse me, it was necessary for me to go outside of the district to get funds as well. Thank you. Well, one other point on that: we had over 350 people contribute to the recall effort financially. So they're singling out four or five that they're alleging have no interest in Michigan, people who own businesses here in Michigan. So, and 350 people contributed. When Andy Dillon uh, led the effort for the tax increase, he didn't just increase taxes in, a, in, in one area. He increased taxes statewide. Right. Any more questions? The gentleman uh, with the camera. Oh, it's actually difficult to get people to contribute in the district when they found out that Andy Dillon and Speaker Miles Handy would see their name on the campaign finance report. We had a number of people who want to contribute, who live in Dearborn Heights, who live in, uh, in, in the Redford Township, in Livonia, but once they found out that Miles Handy was going to see their name, they're worried about their liquor licenses if they had them, they're worried about their business uh, you know, license, and they're worried about Treasury coming down and doing a little audit. Any other questions? Sir, with a uh, notepad there. <laughs> we'll have another press conference in Lansing, uh, and then we'll walk the boxes over to the Secretary of State's office, which is located behind the Capitol building.